Howard Skull said, the currency of leadership is transparency. You have got to be truthful. Transparency, honesty, kindness, good stewardship, even humor works in businesses at all times. First step to practice transparency is disclosure. Sustainability reporting or ESG reporting is a voluntary non-financial disclosure which has the maximum financial impact. Hi, my name is Dr. Shruti Sharma and today I'm going to simplify standards, frameworks and protocols for sustainability in ESG reporting. As businesses and their stakeholders increasingly recognize the importance of environmental, social and governance, which is ESG performance, it's important to understand how various sustainability reporting mechanisms work together to enable effective voluntary disclosures of these factors. It is important to note the difference between standards, frameworks and protocols. Now, what are standards? Standards are well-defined and are expected to be followed closely. Frameworks, on the other hand, are broad guidelines and imprecise expectation of reporting. Protocols are the specific tools, methodologies or instructions that help organization to measure, monitor and report their sustainability performance in line with the chosen framework and standards. They address various aspects of sustainability reporting, such as greenhouse gas, GHG emissions, accounting, water usage, waste management, energy usage, and plastic waste generated. Standards give structure, comparability, and comprehensiveness to sustainability or ESG reporting. Now, let us look at most popular ESG standards, frameworks, and protocols. Understand the pros and cons to take a better decision for sustainability reporting. Now, the first is Global Reporting Initiative Standard, which is GRI Standard. This is currently the most comprehensive and widely accepted of sustainability reporting standards. It has a set of 10 reporting principles that should be adhered to with respect to report the content and report quality. Since this disclosure is stakeholder focused, so stakeholder engagement and materiality assessment are pivotal to the reporting process in the set of standards. Now in GRI, the disclosures are divided into two main sections, which are further divided across two more rounds. Universal standards, which include Foundation 101, General Disclosure 102 and Management Process 103. Second is topic specific standards, where is topics related to economic are 200, social 400 and environmental 300 category and each category has specified disclosures under them. The pros of using GRI is that it's comprehensive, clear and specific with explanation for every disclosure. It has two options for reporting, one slightly limited, the other comprehensive. One set of standards for all industry sector and in makes it versatile and adaptable to different stages of reporting, the needs of the company or stakeholders and industry. The con of GRI is it is so extensive that it tends to intimidate new reporters. Many disclosures tend to require referring to detailed explanation to understand and requirement a few topics such as noise aren't covered. The second is SASB. The Sustainable Accounting Standard Board standards are now part of the Value Reporting Foundation along with the Integrated Reporting Framework that primarily addresses the need of investors to assess their investment potential and risks. SASB standard enable companies around the world to identify, measure and manage the subset of ESG topics that most directly impact long-term enterprise value creation. Like GRI, SASB has three run structure. 77 industry standards for 77 industries divided under each of 11 industry category. And each of the 77 industry mentioned has a separate standard with documentation on the standards basis for conclusion, which explains any revision and a recommended application guidance. 
The positives of SASB is its industry focused topic coverage makes it easier for the reporting organization to focus on topics that are crucial to it without needing to distribute its reporting resources on topics unimportant or un inconsequential or immaterial to it. The negative side is of uh, SASB is it's focused on the topic it covers by industry can also make its scope limited something like having blinders on while making the organization sustainable and reporting on it. Now this aspect stops the standard from being wholesome to its approach. Now coming to the frameworks, the first framework is integrated reporting framework. This framework has been developed by the International Integrated Reporting Council IIRC. The integrated reporting framework is now jointly part of the Value Reporting Foundation along with the SASP. Integrated reporting combines material information about the organization's strategy, governance, performance and prospects as that it reflects the commercial, social and environmental context within which it operates. The IR framework provides eight content elements as it calls them along with guiding principles and explain certain fundamental concepts in its framework document. The eight elements include aspects such as business model, strategy and resource allocation, outlook and the basis of preparation and presentation of the report. The second is CDP or carbon disclosure project. Now CDP guidance through CDP companies throughout the world are persuaded to measure, manage, disclose and ultimately reduce their greenhouse gas emissions. The guidance is meant primarily for cities, companies, investors, states and regions to report on any or all of these three areas of focus which are climate, water and forest. The CDP guidance is in the form of a questionnaire for which each area of focus to be filled online on the CDP website. Now CDP has now introduced a scoring mechanism also based on analysis of the responses of its respondent. The next is TCFD or Task Force on Climate Related Financial Disclosures. Now this was developed to provide recommendation for more effective climate related disclosures that could promote more informed investment, credit and insurance underwriting decisions. This framework, which is TCFD, would enable stakeholders to better understand the concentration of carbon-related assets in the financial sector and the financial system's exposure to climate-related risk, its impact. As this understanding of the financial implications associated with climate change grows, it would empower the markets to channel investment to sustainable and resilient solutions, their opportunities and business models. The TCFD framework is presented in the form of recommendations. The 11 disclosure recommendation it provides span four different areas, governance, strategy, risk management and metric targets. So these are the four core of TCFD framework. Now we will talk about the various protocols of sustainability reporting. Now, various protocols for sustainability reporting are, the first is TCFD. These recommendations help organization align with TCFD framework, providing a consistent approach for disclosing climate-related financial risks and opportunities. The second is GHG protocol. This protocol supports various reporting frameworks and standards by providing guidelines for measuring and managing GHG emissions enabling organization to track their climate impact. Now the third is CDP questionnaires. Now these questionnaires help organizations respond to CDP's annual disclosure request, providing a structured format for reporting carbon, water and forest related information. There is CDP water protocol. This protocol provides guidance in reporting water related risks opportunities and impact enabling organizations to align with the CDP's water disclosure requirement. There is CDP forest protocol. This protocol offers guidance on disclosing forest related risks, opportunities and impacts helping organizations comply with CDP's forest disclosure requirements. 
integrating framework standards and protocols into sustainability reporting is not strictly sequential but rather it's an iterative and interconnected process now how do companies start reporting what kind of a structure do they follow the first thing to do is they need to select the framework organizations first choose a suitable sustainability reporting framework that aligns with their strategic goals stakeholder expectations and the industry context in which they operate second is you identify a standard within the chosen framework organization identify the relevant standards both universal and industry specific to capture and report material sustainability issues the last and the third is the protocol application so you go by guidelines so organizations apply their appropriate protocols to measure monitor and report the sustainability performance in according with the selected frameworks and standards Now, International Sustainability Standard Board, which is ISSP, on 26 June 2023, issued the first IFRS Sustainability Disclosure Standard, IFRS 1, which is general requirement for disclosures of sustainability-related financial information, and IFRS 2, S2, which is climate-related disclosures. The publication of the first two sustainability disclosure standard is a key milestone in the ISSB's vision. The ISB's first two standards are designed to be applied together. They support companies to identify and report information that investors need for informed decision making. It, in other words, information that would affect the assessments that investors make about companies' future cash flow. Currently in India, top thousand listed companies are required to furnish a business responsibility and sustainability report, which is BRSR, to the stock exchange as a part of the annual report. The BRSR seeks disclosure from listed companies on their performance against the nine principles of the National Guidelines for Responsible Business Conduct, which is NGRPC. As per the BRSR guidance note. listed companies can prepare and disclose sustainability report as a part of their annual report based on internationally accepted reporting frameworks such as GRI SASB TCFD IR integrated reporting and can cross refer the disclosures made under such frameworks to the disclosures sought under the BRSR the mandatory reporting under BRSR does not restrict companies from adopting the ISSB framework and companies can look to adopt these standards on a voluntary basis and it would help in producing globally comparable sustainability disclosures and this would also aid in one of the most important thing which is sustainable finance now is the time to get ready to report using these new standards companies in india should understand the impact of new sustainability disclosure standard they will need to ensure that they have the processes and controls in place to produce robust and timely information understanding the intricacies of framework standards and protocols is essential for organizations aiming to create a solid sustainability strategy by becoming familiar with the various components involved in the sustainability reporting process organizations can develop comprehensive sustainability reports that cater to diverse stakeholders effectively demonstrating their commitment to sustainability as the reporting landscape continues to evolve ensuring your organization remains compliant with the relevant and emerging regulations and meets stakeholders expectations is crucial for success for any business organization thank you